Hi, I'm Janet Skates, and welcome back for another video on my YouTube channel that I started uh, recently. I'm excited about YouTube because I think it's going to give me yet another way to interact with people outside of my Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm going to do a, a little fun video with a paper piece that I have. Uh, you can see here, this is a smaller uh, work on on I think it's a hundred and thirty pound watercolor paper uh, and it looks like a cold press paper so it has a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of tooth to it and I've put uh, two or three layers it looks like of paint. I was cleaning my studio today and I found this and I love it. Like I love the colors and the texture and some of the uh, the little work that's been done underneath in the layers and so at some point I laid it down and didn't pick it back up. So we're going to uh, play with it. I'm going to start with some Posca pens and maybe some ink tense pencils. We'll talk about it on the video, but um, that's where I'm gonna get started. Okay, so I'm sitting and working and looking at this uh, piece and like I mentioned beforehand, there are some layers behind, and you can see here some of the texture that has been created with, I think, just paint. I don't think I've used any gesso on this piece, uh, but there have been scratchings in, in the uh, background, in the paint, the wet paint, and then lots of mark making going on. So. Like I said, this is this is for fun and I wanna see where this goes. So I'm gonna start by, in the background here, I see uh, where I've done a pattern of circles and then I've painted over creating some more. So now I want to go back and bring these circles back to the forefront. Um, and I'm going to start with, uh, I've got some great pinks and purples going on here, so I don't want to interfere with those. I love this teal. So I'm gonna start with the teal, and I'm going to recreate the circles. I don't wanna go over the ones I did before. I want you to be able to see the ones that are in the background here. And when I'm doing this, while I want it to be fun and playful, I I don't want to get too too precise and uptight in it, and you know start getting. I tend to get way too way too fixated on the details sometimes. So I'm going fast and holding my pen loosely. I love Posca markers; they're so much fun. And I'm just making my little rows of circles. And I love that you can see the others in the background there. Okay, now I want to bring in some black to this area up here. Oh, I like this too. I'm going to pull this out in a minute. And I'm searching for my black Posca pen. You can help me search. <laughs> See here, I keep quite a collection of Posca pens. And it's shameful how many of these are the ultra fine black and white. I have literally a dozen in there of the black and white, which I use most, most often uh, and I need to part with them when they're, when it's time to let them go. Okay. I want to play on the line. I see a natural shape here. See, this is one I need to let go. So I'll grab another one here. Yeah. And I'm going to play on this natural line that I have. I like to do repeated stripes, dots, and patterns. So 
I'm just working with that shape there. And then I think here I will start on that. I'm gonna turn my paper, make sure that you can still see it, but I'm gonna turn my paper. Don't be afraid to move your paper around for, um, for ease of reach. I like these intersecting lines here. Yeah, that's fun. Now I'm going to continue with my black and add little dots and marks here. Sometimes I use very uniform shapes and dots that, you know, the same size, the same, uh, or in, in rows, very particular rows for a certain effect, but other times I really want to mix it up and use different shapes and sizes and you can see how easy the the Posca paint flows on this dried acrylic it's just amazing it is it is like using a high flow paint it's just super super fun but without the brush Now I'm going to go for this. Uh, this is a color fuchsia that actually did not come in one of the sets. I found this when I went to Jerry's Artorama in uh, Houston. And there were a few colors that I found there that don't come, this is another fuchsia, that don't come in the sets. So you can get on Dick Blick a dot com or other art supply stores. I'm sure Jerry's Artorama and uh, pick up some of these really fun, fun colors if you want to incorporate them into your work. I think here I'm going to add Oh, excuse me, Miss Birdie. Come up here. Yes, that's the um, the fun part of filming with our fabulous furry friends. And Birdie is fabulous. If you follow my Instagram, you've seen Birdie. She's got quite a fan base of her own. She's fabulous. She's like the best cat ever, but not in the middle of our work. So. Again, all shapes and sizes. I'm just kind of moving them over different areas of the paint in the background. And then I want to see a little yellow come into play here. Oftentimes yellow is, is really transparent and I have to, you know, two or three coats to get it nice and opaque, but the Posca pen yellow is just, it's just brilliant. I'm 
using the black again to accent each of these Not this one. I'm going to throw it away right now. This kind of practice is just really good for becoming confident in your mark making for experimenting with color choices, um, being comfortable with your pens uh, and the use of them. So, you know, that's just practice. And so it's also very therapeutic. If you journal, you probably know what I mean. I'm looking now for a gray. Because I think I want to go over these with gray. I love the fuchsia color, but I'm not crazy about it against these purples and pinks that I had in the background. So I'm going to go over it with a gray and it makes a really kind of cool purple color. It does activate that fuchsia so you can just wipe your marker off a little bit at a time if you're going over this. See now I really like this. It's like a, a, a muddy color washed gray and I like it so much better than I did the fuchsia. Oftentimes I will do something in a painting or a journal piece or what have you and it will be a part that I really don't like or I'm not happy with. And then I will, will play with it and, and you know just continue to work over it and it will end up being one of my favorite elements in the finished piece. So don't be afraid to, you know, nothing's too precious, cover it up, play with it. Um, if you paint something you don't like, paint over it. And have another go. Adding another layer of color. I'm using the white. This is the ultra fine tip. I think Birdie left a cat hair behind. <laughs> um, this is the ultra fine tip and the other was I think the next larger that I used of the turquoise. So I'm just going around these. If your marker begins to, uh, you know, to lighten up or stall on you, shake it and pop the tip down a couple of times on the paper and that will usually get it going again for you.
a lot of times flipping your work or turning it around or you know 90 degrees really is fun it's a fun way to see areas that you might want to work on So I'm going to stop here and step back and take a look and uh, I hope that you get out your journal or your paper and do some work too with uh, markers, pencils, pastels, or, or pens, sharpies are awesome, whatever you're working on, and have some fun. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.